Welcome to Military Neighbors, a Fleet Family Support Center program on skills for living. My name is April Holtmeyer, I'm your host, and we are so glad you've joined us today. So we have Joe Sastry with us from the Groton Emergency, well actually it's Emergency Management Director for the Town of Groton, mm -hmm. and you're going to be talking with us today about emergency preparedness as well as giving us a little bit of an inside perspective on the management component. Sure. As well. Be happy so, to do that. Thank you. Right off the bat, the first question I have for you is, for families relocating to the area, what type of emergencies should they be preparing for? Well, the first thing and the most obvious thing is, is the type of weather events that we can experience here in New England. Um, you know, typical stuff, snowstorms in the wintertime, um, severe thunderstorms, hail, you know, in the summer and the warmer months. Um, the occasional tornado warning, although it does not happen very often down this corner of the state. Um, we're kind of unique in that. And then, um, you know, the occasional hurricane, you know, start with, you know, come hurricane season, which runs from June to, June through October every year. Um, so you've got that. And then, you know, the other less well-known stuff, you know, we have a, a nuclear power plant across the river in Waterford, so that puts us in what they call the emergency planning zone the communities that surround the plant um, and the highly unlikely event that some sort of a major malfunction there will, will take place. And then of course, you know, the sub base itself, you know, it's a, it's a tempting, you know, target perhaps. Um, although, you know, we, we, the town and the DOD does a very good job about protecting it. And then, you know, your usual stuff, hazmat accidents, you know, tractor trailers tipping over, things like that. So, you know, the usual stuff, um, you know, and, and it just, families need to be prepared for that usual stuff so they don't get caught short when it happens. So with communication in regards to notifications mm -hmm. with, with these different types of facets of emergencies, because that's quite a variety, what resources are available from you to be notified in the event of an emergency here? Well, we do the typical things historically. I mean, we'll be, we're constantly, when something's going on, we're constantly in, in contact with the news media. Um, they're very good about putting the message out for us. Um, we have, Emergency Management Office has, we have our own Facebook page. There's several Facebook pages associated with the town of Groton. Uh, we have our own, and you know, we'll put information out on that. Um, typically, or most of the time, I would say, you know, for severe weather warnings and stuff like that, um, the Facebook page feeds our Twitter account, so if you're on Facebook, you can search for Town of Groton Emer Office of Emergency Management, and I think uh, Twitter, we're at Groton OEM, um, so you can get the same information via your Twitter. Um, we'll post, you know, important stuff right on the town's webpage. You know, there's a, a place right on the main page for the town where we can put announcements up, you know, from time to time. Um, we also have the ability to put short messages on, you know, our, this, this TV channel that folks are watching. Um, and we can put a scroller across the bottom. Um, and all of those are, you know, available for information, you know, by anybody. And, you know, we can put that information out 24-7, 365 if we have to. Fantastic. So then there's also the CT alert. Can you tell us more about CT alert? Yeah, CT alert's a really nice tool for us. Um, several years back, uh, the state of Connecticut wisely decided to uh, purchase, if you will, a system by which all of the citizens and all of the towns, 169 towns, can be notified by local and, and state government officials in times of emergency. Um, we operate the system for our local town. Um, so we put out messages, you know, for the residents within Groton and all the businesses. Um, folks can sign up with it. It's a free service, doesn't cost you anything. Um, you can get to the page, uh, ctalert.gov is the web page that, that you can register. Um, there's a link to CT Alert right off of the town's web page, a little button, just click on it, it takes you there. And you create a, an account for yourself, username, password stuff, usual stuff. And then you can go in and you can uh, make sure your, your home phone is listed, your cell phone numbers, um, 
email addresses, instant messaging addresses, if they still use, if they happen to still use those. And you can, uh, you can put it in for uh, several locations. So for example, you know, assuming someone lives in Connecticut, um, they can put in their residence, they can put in the address of where they work, they can put in the address of where their kids go to school. So if anybody broadcasts a message for those particular areas, but not a town-wide or a statewide alert, they would get the, the message automatically. Um, again, it's a free service. We use it a lot, um, and we encourage everybody to sign up on it. Um, again, it's ctalert.gov, yeah, ctalert.gov, and there's a link right off the Groton uh, town webpage to do that. What a great resource. It is. It's a wonderful, wonderful system. So then my next question for you is, who staffs the emergency center? Well, me. Okay. And we have 13 uh, 911 dispatchers, and the 911 center for Groton is my jurisdiction also. I'm responsible for that. And then when we staff up the EOC, we'll typically get key players, key employees from a variety of town and, and federal entities if necessary. So we'll have somebody from Public Works and the police department and the fire department. And, um, you know, we'll have IT folks there. And, and, you know, we'll have some folks from social services. And if it's a real large scale event, we'll even have a representative from the sub base who comes over and sits in our EOC and then communicates back with the sub base EOC. And if the sub base has something going on and they activate their EOC, someone, you know, one of my folks, will send somebody over to the sub base and do the reverse. So um, it depends on you know the type of situation. Um, as to exactly who fills it in, but you know, it's it's pretty much everybody who has some resources, you know, that might be impacted by the event, school board folks and things like that. What a great collaboration between Subbase and the town of Groton. We've worked very hard yeah. about doing that. Yeah. Um, we have a great relationship with the Subbase. Um, I, I carry, like a lot of key people on the Subbase, I'm sure. Um, I've got the uh, command duty officer's cell phone and my cell phone. Um, you know, when I put out a, a weather alert, I include the folks at the, you know, the emergency management folks at the sub base. And, you know, they'll share the same information with the commands. When the sub base sends something out, I get it. So we have a great relationship between the two entities. And um, it works really well because, you know, the folks outside the fence line, and inside the fence line are still grotten people as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, um, whether you're here for a month or six months or three years or whatever the case may be, you know, we're all one family here. And, you know, um, not that I have a deep need to know exactly what's going on at the sub base all the time, but if something at the base is gonna affect the community, we need to know about it. So if the base shuts down the gates for whatever reason, well, we know the traffic is going to back up, so we'll send extra police officers down. If something's going on outside the base that they need to know about, you know, we pass that along. And um, so it, it works really well, and uh, we're, I'm very proud of, of the, the inroads that we've made and the level of communication we've built up over, oh, I don't know, the last 10 years or so. It works really great. Oh, that's fan that's encouraging. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know what? For our viewers, because we used acronyms, EOC. Can you tell us what that stands for? Emergency Operations Center. Thank you. Emergency it, Operations. Yeah, it's basically just a place where different people with different skill sets or different responsibilities come together to take on whatever it is that you're you know you're that's facing you, weather event, whatever. Okay. All right. So my next question for you is: You had mentioned. Uh, the different facets of information that you pass along. So what kind of information is expected to be shared through the Town of Groton Emergency Center, um, like regarding power outages or We will, or you know, for, for a larger scale event, I mean, you know, if a, if a tree knocks out somebody's individual home power, well, it'll get fixed. And if it knocks off three or four houses, It'll get fixed, we're not gonna share that. But when we have a large scale event, you know, winter storm, trees coming down, uh, we'll share the information as we get it from the power companies. 
So I'll get a notification from Eversource or from Groton Utilities, you know, this neighborhood is without power. Um, this is the cause, estimated time, you know, to fix it, restore power, four hours or whatever the case may be. And we'll put that out on the Facebook, which goes to the Twitter and, and all that other stuff. And then what we found particularly valuable is that the folks in the community will feed us information back. So in past storms where we've had large, you know, wide scale or large areas without power, as the power company or telephone or whoever restores service, people will send us a message because I typically don't get that level of detail from the power company. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll say, you know, X, X Street, we got power again. Okay, good. And I check it off on the map, you know, and I can, you know, with the help of the citizens, I'm actually tracking the restoration. That's great. You know, it, it, it's, you know, I'm not a tweeter. I can't say anything in 140 characters or less. Um, but the social aspect, the social media thing, has become a great way to exchange information both ways. We're, we're good about sending stuff out, um, but we're finding that the citizens are helping us do our job. That is wonderful. You know, it is. It's great. So we love being a partner with the community folks. That is great. We're, we're going to take a quick break. So we're going, we're going to break. And when we come back, we're going to continue talking with Joe Sastry to learn more about emergency planning when it comes to facing um, different type of emergencies here in our local area. Stay tuned. Today, Eric Almarola behind the wheel in that 43 car. We all have a role to play here at Richard Petty Motorsports. We respect each other, work hard, and that helped us get the big win in Daytona. My partners in the U.S. Air Force also know that it takes a team to make each mission a success. Your coworkers, family, and friends are your team. Treat them with respect and together you can accomplish great things. This message is brought to you by the U.S. Air Force. You'd do anything to take care of that spot on your lawn, so why not take care of that spot on your skin? If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. Check your skin for suspicious or changing spots. Go to SpotSkinCancer.org to find out what to look for. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome back to Military Neighbors. Today we're talking with Joe Sastry from the Groton Emergency Management Office. And the second part of our show, we're going to be discussing emergency preparedness. So first question for you for this half, I would like to know, let's say there's a weather related event that occurs. Can you explain expectations for if a citizen is displaced and you guys open up shelters? Sure. If we open up a shelter, we'll advertise where it is. Um, it could be, for example, at Fitch High School, it could be at the Senior Center. It depends on the situation. Um, we'll put that information out using all of our web postings and whatnot. And if it's a large enough event, we'll even do a town-wide notification on that CT alert mm -hmm. system we talked about earlier. Um, and then, you know, we'll tell people where and when and what time it's open and things like that. Um, and, and typically, it will tell people if they have transportation issues to give us a holler. We'll supply a phone number and we'll work out the details. Okay. Okay, great. Now, what about, so that's the where to go and how to get there. What about the what to take with you? Yeah, the what to take with you. Um, <clears throat> it's bare bones, what we offer, um, kind of a cot kind of a thing. 
So we tell people or ask people to bring pillows and blankets to make themselves a little bit more comfortable. And then to bring the usual stuff. So if you take prescription medicines, bring the prescription medicines. If you bring a baby or whatever, bring formula and snacks for kids because if you give the kids snacks, they'll, they'll calm down a little bit. Um, you know, so you, you would bring whatever stuff you need to make yourself comfortable. If you have a, an electric medical device, uh, an oxygen machine, well, bring it with you. And we'll, we'll set you up and, and we'll plug it in and you'll be fine. Um, so, you know, we, th there are a number of, of, of suggestions available, a number of websites. You try to bring what you think is, you know, you're going to need, you know, a book to read or books for the kids to read or crayons. We have some stuff. We'll try to make your stay as comfortable as possible, but there's no concierge service um, and it is pretty much bare bones. And it's, it's basically a shelter from the storm. Okay. So, you know, don't expect too much, but we'll take care of you. Great. Now you had mentioned medical devices. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in the realm of special needs, is there anything that, that the town of Groton is prepared to, to help assist families with special needs? Sure. Um, every year, we, there's a mailer that goes out. Um, typically, um, it'll also go out at the same time we send out a, a brochure about the millstone plan, so it kind of keeps people interested. And people can register if they have a, a family member who has special needs. Um, that might need special medical transport, um, person's bedridden or wheelchair, you know, it needs a wheelchair to get around. So we'll collect those registrations from folks and we'll put it in a database. We don't share it with anybody so that if there's a storm or some event where we need to evacuate, we know who they are and what kind of stuff they need. Um, and then, like I said, we'll, you know, do our best to bring along your wheelchair, whatever your case may be. Uh, to make your, your life a little bit more comfortable on the other end of that ride. Um, and the same thing goes for people that just, you know, don't have transportation available. You know, we won't right be there right the moment, but we will get you, if we have to come, we'll come right. and get you somehow. All right, so then my next question would be about family pets. Oh, Can we take care of family pets. Okay. We got to take care of the Muffies and the Buffies and the Puffies too. Uh, when, we op when we open up a shelter for folks, we'll also open up a pet shelter where people can bring their family pets and it's, it's separated from the people area, uh, but um, you know, we have the cages and, and all that good stuff and you know, some dog food and cat food. If you're bringing a cat or a dog that likes a particular food, bring along some food. Again, it's a short time stay, but you, know, you don't want to put them off their feed. And um, you know, we'll, take care of, we'll take care of the pets. You'll, still be allowed to walk them and things like that and uh, so you can bring your your dogs and cats we've had dogs cats rabbits ferrets uh we've had some birds and the last time we opened up a shelter we actually had a bed of fish in a little fish tank can't put the bed of fish with the cats so we took the bait of fish and put them in another place but oh. he was apparently very happy you know so uh, we take care of the pets too because we found out a long time ago if people don't want to leave their pets at home and if you don't allow them to bring the pets you know they're not going to come to the shelter right. and of course service animals are always welcome you know with their owners you know in in the in the people portion of the shelter if you will okay. so we've got it covered that's so heartwarming the next question for you would be on the realm of preparedness what action can our viewers take to prepare for common emergencies and weather threats to our area what you want to do is you want to plan for the likely events, okay? So you know you're likely to have a power outage. So you want to make sure that you have whatever you need to make it through that power outage. If you're a typical family, you know, okay, maybe you're going to need, maybe you should make a plan to cook on your grill in the winter time if you have to because your electric stove doesn't work. So you kind of plan it out what you're going to need. Most of the, the large storm events for a shelter and stuff, the shelter portion is short. Right. You know, it, the storm comes, storm goes, you go back home, um, and then we all deal with what's ever left over. So you look at the possible effects of what's going on, and then you plan accordingly. Um, 
you know, it's, it's fairly simple to do. And, and a lot of the planning is the same for uh, multiple different types of events. So it's not a really difficult thing to do. So my next question for you is, where would you recommend people go to get additional information for these checklists and to help make plans? I would say um, there's two, two main website. Uh -huh. um, there's tons of information out there. But the quickest way is both through the Red Cross, American Red Cross. They have tons of information. They explain how they run the shelters. There's lists about, we talked earlier about what to bring. You know, they have all those suggested lists. And then ready.gov, which is operated by the Federal Emergency Management Association, FEMA, um, or agency rather. And um, there's, there's information on how to make family emergency plans, company emergency plans, you know, all sorts of stuff, what to plan for, how to plan, what you need. You know, there's a ton of information out there. There's so much. Those two sites are so good, we don't even bother trying to compete with them on our webpage. We just direct people to those. Drive the traffic there. Yep. So my last question for you is, if you could offer a tip for people on a limited budget to make a kit, what, what would that be? We have a, there, there's a program that we ran some, a couple of years ago, and we, we called it Do One Thing. So there's no reason why anybody has to spend a ton of money on an emergency kit. 99% of what you might need is already in your home. So, for example, when you go shopping, you buy food, you buy an extra can or two of, of soup or whatever it is that you could eat, you know, prepared but can, doesn't need refrigeration, and you put that aside. You know, you've already got blankets, you've already got pillows, um, you've already got your prescriptions. Now, along those lines, if you've got a big weather event coming, and you have a prescription, somebody in your family has a prescription, and that's gonna run out right about when the weather event comes, well, you might wanna pick it up early. Right. You know, let's make sense, because the drugstore might be closed too. So, um, you know, just buy, pick up, find one more thing, you know. You can, a lot of stores give out those uh, recyclable, reusable bags now. Well, there's your kit bag. You just take one and you start putting stuff in there that you're going to need to take with you if you have to bail out of your house. We're not talking about, I would never recommend or tell anybody to go spend hundreds of dollars on this stuff. You have it, you know? All right, well, thank you. We are out of time. Oh, that was fast. Yes, you've shared a wealth of information with our viewers today, so thank you so much, Joe, for joining us today. My, my pleasure. Yeah. If you'd like additional information on emergency preparedness, you're welcome to call Fleet and Family Support Center at 860-694-3383. And uh, my name is April Holmeyer, and I'm so glad that you've joined us on Military Neighbors.